Bungalow Bill here, and welcome back to From the Depths, and in particular, the Livewood Neater campaign. The Steel Striders still have a lot left to them, and, well, we're really going to be starting off with the Black Current, most likely, as it is cloudy with a chance of meatballs. The Grey Talons, or the Twin Guard, rather, are no more. The Grey Talons are probably soon to follow them. I probably will not be showing much of this. I don't think there's much interesting left here. I've already shown... You know, one of their fortresses getting bombarded by a meatball, I don't need to show it three more times. So, let's just get right into battle with the Black Current. Hopefully I will be able to spot it, maybe I won't. Alright, I've spawned in one meatball and one incredible husk. And the Seal Striders have spawned in one Iron Maiden with a Black Current to follow. This may be somewhat hazardous because the Black Current should be spawning. Okay, that's not as bad as I thought, but there's a reasonable chance we'll be over the black current when it spawns, and that'll be hazardous to our health. Additionally, we have to deal with the problem that since I built these crafts pretty quickly, if I remember correctly, they do not drop sonar buoys. I have vehicles with sonar, but none of them are here, and they're all pretty slow, which is why they're not here. I, I was moving them in into position, I just didn't quite get them here fast enough. So, we should have wireless snoopers. Hopefully they'll do the job. I imagine the black current is big enough and just sort of has enough garbage that we can detect with it. Is it despawning? No, it is not. That we'll be able to spot it reasonably well. I'm gonna pause so that it despawns while my vehicles aren't moving so that we don't... I think we're gonna keep moving this way with both vehicles and we'll be in a really bad position to shoot at the black current. If I have to, I'm gonna use manual targeting on the black current. I prefer not to though, I like my boats to just do what they do. We will find out in a second if our missile defense is good enough. The black current, because it has to spawn surfaced, might just be in for a world of hurt before it really gets to do much. That looks very painful. Our anti-missile systems are firing quite a bit. That looks like it was not super efficient, but we we did do something. We certainly did something. Most of our shells are not or are bouncing, but we're getting quite a few underwater. Although the low shell velocity is probably hurting a bit. It looks like the drives on the black current are have already been taken out. We have no flares, so fortunately our Sea Wiz is hitting. Yeah, we're doing pretty fantastically on the Sea Wiz Sea Wiz department. Looks like we can see her fine. It's just the meatballs are not shooting down at sharp enough of an angle. So that combined with our slow shells is not great. However, those cram cannon hits are fantastic. She won't be able to run for the surface because her engines have been taken out. So Meatball gets an F for this engagement. Incredible Husk, A plus, you did good, you did good work. I guess the interceptors from the Meatball did something, but I think technically black current godly, but difficulty rating is currently 0.75, which is just on the threshold between very hard and godly. And, well, if you can hit submarines, you can usually kill them. If you're an air vehicle, it's really difficult for them to engage efficiently with anything. And they can be super cavitation based, but really they're going to be engaging with missiles, and those can be difficult to not have hard countered. Especially because I think kinetic missiles are just a little bit harder to efficiently utilize from a submarine than from other craft that can really use ejectors to their maximum efficiency to punt those missiles out quickly. Ah uh, yes, the best part about fighting the Grey Talons, when you destroy enough of their headquarters or, you know, two of the same from the same tribe, and get the ICPM spawning in, which we have the new ICBMs now. Unfortunately, they're going to trickle in because I grabbed bigger fleets than I'd realized and wanted to keep the battle size moderate, so I put it at 100k. So 
We're just gonna watch my one block get fried repeatedly because despite the fact that they're actually kind of dodgy, they're not really gonna make it in through these laser turrets. So they're just getting popped all over. Well, that's the first time a husk has gone down so far, I believe, and this one went down at only 80%. It's still alive, it's just not thrusting particularly well. Also, against the railguns that the Raven's Nest has, these things just don't last because the belly armor just isn't tanky enough. So they just don't shoot enough cram shells. The meatballs are kind of a requirement. And I didn't bring any meatballs into this battle. So things are not going as well, especially because the paper tiger drag its belly up on the beach. I do have some missile submarines that are saving the day a little bit. I think it's basically impossible for the raven's nest to beat them. Although I may have forgotten to retrofit them. That one seems to be diving though, but I think they're just doing random things. So actually the raven's nest... Raven's nest still might beat them, especially in this relatively tight area where I have to worry about things like... Alright, looks like it's good. Anyway, not nearly as much firepower left as I'd like. The Paper Tiger is still shooting though. These things are far tougher than they really have any right to be. Slightly longer barrels might be a good idea. It's looking looking like if it had a little bit longer barrels, when these barrels depressed through the hull in the seas, it would still be able to fire. Fortunately, it's not that tragic if a bunch of stuff in here gets blown up. They're sort of designed like that. Uh, guess what time it is. I have decided to spawn in Miles against three cat sharks and a Reef Shark to give him a chance at redemption. Actually, there's a backup Miles as well. Of course, I did set the battle size small, so we're only going to be send spawning in one enemy at a time, but th this seems necessary. Miles is a bit slow, but we love him anyway. Due to this large signpost, which I should probably have named it like and subscribe or something like that, given how obscene an amount of space it takes up, uh, we're, we're going to be looking at it like this the whole time. So unfortunately, the back part of Miles' salvo is so large that the front part, I kind of expect to be reloading by the time... It really gets to an enemy. Of course, this is um, complete overkill for an enemy that just detonates itself. I... I am considering doing a campaign where I do a custom campaign and play as the Steel Striders on either easy or medium. And the Cat Shark would probably actually be my workhorse. They are pretty effective. Although, Miles is way more expensive than them. Of course, now we have the Reef Shark, and the Reef Shark can actually do something. It's currently, currently shooting at our aim point spoofing. Tons of blocks falling off there. I'm going to. S I'm interested to see how we are at shooting it when it's passing sort of through our grid. It seems the answer is pretty good. Yes, pretty good. We do cost twice as much as it, but we are some sort of obscene eldritch horror. So it's really impossible to tell how we're going to do. Oh yes, just. All the miles, miles and miles of miles. I, I've, I've lost track of how many AIs there are there. I think it's 30 something. Since there was an AI in the prefab, um, every single one of these has an AI in it. Th there should be the option to add folders in here. Well, before we waste too many resources, Unfortunately, I put enough on Miles to actually fight this time. Let's set a despawn. There we go. Oh, wait, wait, is there another one? Yeah, there's one more Cat Shark. I thought this was our first victory for Miles, but... 
We have to destroy this poor, poor cat shark first. You know, this is what the Scarlet Dawn Archangel should actually be like. It should be this massive ring, maybe not a mile across. It needs to spawn in in um, less than the minute that it takes me to spawn in miles, but it should just be something obscenely large, like 500 meters round in a ring that just launches missiles in from every angle while floating above you. Unfortunately, we don't get the bullet trails or the muzzle flashes through glass, which kind of kind of ruins the experience, but this is really this is really the glory of the meatball. From here it's a little bit better. The barrels elevating through the body ruins it a little bit. I could make this pitch to target to reduce that a little bit, and perhaps I should, but I'm not sure it has the forwards or reverse thrust for that to be terribly functional. It's not terrible, and it's not a super slow craft, but not a huge amount of thrust there either. I did realize that I had automatic detection set to 1 before because the tracking on the nukes was way too good. The lasers shouldn't have been seeing them that well. They still would have all gotten fried before reaching my craft, but it really, it really shouldn't have been as quick as it was, so turned that back off. Also the reason the black current was so visible. Well, I'm going to fast forward to the part where this thing dies. All right, this is like 10 times faster than when I wasn't using the meatball. This is just, this is just a lot of shells. 1100 APS firepower is 1100 APS firepower. Especially when it's all hitting, the disadvantage of being a fortress. There are some advantages, but these quantities of hesh make this really unhappy really fast. It loses pretty much all of its re all of its decent firepower in this direction almost instantly. Gets off like one or two missile salvos and now looks like AI dead because everything stopped firing. Not seeing the giant quantities of AI components I was expecting, but I believe this is it for the Grey Talons. This should be their last fortress. And I believe we don't get any nukes either because uh, the script that despawns the Great Talons should make it so that there aren't any nukes, unfortunately. Well, apparently there was one more that I kind of forgot about. It was why I hesitated when I said that you had to kill two of each because I kind of remembered there being, being a third one for the Tribe of the Iron Blockade, and turns out that is the case, however, I'm going to go and rectify this problem shortly. Alright, I have finally showed up to rectify the problem, and I have brought the usual partners in crime. One, because they're way faster than many of my other craft, and well, two, because they're pretty effective at killing stationary targets. Unfortunately, the husk is not doing its job of absorbing missile firepower while the meatball does its job of actually killing the enemy, but the meatball can take a moderate amount of frontal firepower, although I wasn't willing to make it that large, so relatively low armor cost, it would not like to take another missile barrage like that. Fortunately, it likely won't have to. As the husk gets closer, it's more and more likely to take incoming firepower, and the amount of damage that the raven's nest is going to deal back is going to diminish quite quickly. Just these these shells burrow through it incredibly fast. It's already cut through the outer ring, and it's starting to slice up the delicate core, which has a lot of stuff that the Raven's Nest really just doesn't want to lose. In particular, if you can blow out the engine spike, which if this thing hasn't been retouched, is down here. I'm looking at materials right now. Oh, there, there are engines. Um, it destroys itself. So, don't know if that's been changed at all, but it loses the engine power to support itself and just kind of dies. This didn't take the normal first blast of missiles, so it's probably... Like, the husk is probably actually still fighting this time. Still not in great condition. It's an absolute glass cannon like many of my other vehicles. 
has very, very thin layers of armor on those components. Which, not great for something that shoots down. Unfortunately, given the way it hovers over its target, its frontal armor is way better than its armor on the bottom, so... It definitely has a glass jaw. But active defenses on it are pretty solid. And it looks like the Raven's Nest is AI dead. So I'm trying to push through this pretty quickly. I really did have one more craft that I wanted to build, but I'm probably I'm probably going to build something like it as a fan build probably for the White Flares after my current one, or maybe even a ways down the future to the point where I'll never get to it. Because since, since I want to try to beat this as a diplomacy victory, I probably have to win before the next council meeting. Or I'll be put against the Scarlet Dawn and it just won't be a possibility anymore. And I haven't used that functionality yet, so I would just like to actually see it work. The ship that I wanted to build would have just been a ramming vehicle that doesn't do much ramming damage, but has just one probably huge missile inside of it that's all heat. And when it hits the enemy, it just triggers the missile to be fired, which would be fired entirely through ejectors and would blow a hole all the way through the enemy vehicle. Be kind of a fun concept, but um, one that I might one that I might visit as a White Flares fan build at some point. Disappointingly, I didn't even get a tech notification when the Grey Talons destroyed. There was no pop-up dialogue of any kind. They simply ceased to exist. So I don't need any of these resources, so I'm probably just going to pull all of these fleets and focus everything on kill killing the Steel Striders. From the looks of it, I'll have a little bit left for them this episode, but um, taking on this fleet that's just sort of milling around, blowing materials, will be the job of the next episode. They did come out of here, so we've got a lot of submarines. I do, I do have a torpedo submarine, I just... I don't know. Never really built many of them. There are some hanging around... Hanging around somewhere. I can build more, I guess, but... Probably won't happen, because I'm already getting so far from the closest bases. This time I managed to pause before the whale shark really did all of its impact Engaging damage, now. so we can see there now. It looks like it took out a lot of barrels, which is a little bit unfortunate. I'm just going to be interested to see if the whale shark actually does better this time. Listening. That's what I get for clicking too many times. I just want it to make that squail very dead. Looks like the exosets are having having difficulty still. Uh, this is this is functional actually. Okay, that was nowhere near where I was hitting hitting the hotkey though. I'm not going to show all of this. We've already beat up on the whale shark before, and I brought a significant fleet here. And no, they're going back to the stratosphere mostly. This guy's kind of functional, though, um, to some extent. It's it's having some difficulties. And definitely, definitely a very dated-looking design. It says top speed of 101, but that's uh, that's going faster than I thought it was, but not that fast. So there's one that's functioning. Having a few troubles getting decent shots, but looks like they're landing now. Pack is just blowing itself up. Exosets are far up in the sky. Let's fast forward this and get to the inevitable conclusion. This time, however, I had a lot of lambs on deck. Or not, well, lambs, yes, but also laser turrets, so this time, the exosets shouldn't pose so much of a problem. I believe the whale shark is AI dead because the meatball stopped shooting at it, although I didn't really check, but it seems to be despawning, and I pulled the meatball and the backup meatball. Which I didn't have to use. It went a lot faster than the last time.
but looks like we're cleaning these up pretty nicely even though I did I did turn automatic detection off. This is just our detection systems, which I didn't have time to precision engineer, so it's a very large amount of spam on the detection components. Oh, I forgot there was a saber that was supposed to be spawning in as well. This poor, poor saber. I did not know that it spawned three drones, so I was wondering what it was repairing. It is... Okay, please, please shoot at the big thing. Um, it is... Pretty well off defensively, so it actually did an admirable job. But uh, this is a little bit too much DACA for it, and it looks like it's AI dead, although it's repairing this Dromeo, so we'll probably have to kill it again. I still don't really understand what the point of the saber is, given that it's entirely defensive and its drones don't really do much. Alrighty, here we are once again with Miles spawning in against the base that would be here if my battle size was larger, but uh, for somewhat obvious reasons I'm keeping it somewhat low. Really one of the predominant factors. Huh. Well, okay. So really one of the pre predominant factors is that I don't want one of my other crafts to spawn inside of Miles. That would, that would be catastrophic from a lag perspective on top of other things. I do expect Miles to get nuked a little bit this fight. It's sort of comes with the territory of not spawning some type of companion vessel that'll stop him from getting nuked. I'm assuming this is the Norge that we're shooting at because it's n I can't see it through miles because it's not the Trondheim. The Guernsey, okay. Well, they don't spawn the Trondheim here at all, so that's... That's why that was happening. I do know what the Guernsey looks like, I just was not looking at her closely enough. Because I have rammed her plenty of times while testing out vehicles. It's actually a little bit hazardous because she uses cram cannons and can't shoot at you if you don't cut through her fast enough. The Tron Time is the one that's actually very scary beyond its difficulty rating. Good, we have plenty of materials. I mean, not when you're normally fighting it, but when you're ramming it, it can be very punishing. Uh, Miles is a bit more asymmetric than, than I would have liked. He's so big that I didn't even notice he wasn't being mirrored when I was trying to mirror him. I had mirror mode on, but I was having issues with materials. I had a ton of materials, but they weren't necessarily where I needed them during the building process. Okay, so we could have a potential issue um, if I don't tell Miles where to go with colliding with this mountain. Listening. Um, Moving out. Now, Miles can't reverse. Okay, the, the, the Liberator Cannon, I do not expect to do that well against this. I, I do realize that I did not put reversing thrusters on Miles, so um, Miles has to turn to get out of here, which might cause might cause Miles to hit the mountain range anyway at this point. Miles probably has enough thrust to avoid it in the upwards direction, but I'm not really sure that's going to happen. All right, so great success against the Liberator Cannon. We are successfully turning. Okay, I can send us to a higher altitude. It does it does allow me to set a waypoint for a higher altitude. Moving out. So I'm gonna set that all the way up and Yes, yes, it appears we are gaining height. 
Miles should be fairly overpowered in the CJE department. These CJEs can very easily lift these pods. It's just a question of not not crashing into the mountain, which would be not not great for Miles. So we'll see. Should I put reverse thrusters on Miles? Well, absolutely. But you know. But also, we're doing a reasonable job of not hitting ourselves with our own missiles. It's sort of unavoidable to an extent because if you put friend or foe guidance, it makes them not target your own ships, but it doesn't make them avoid your own ships. A few of them going outside the field of view of the missile. But I think we still have enough. So. Yes, I was expecting this to happen. These are in fact launching. Okay, so that's not the worst. Oh, and they didn't launch early enough, so... Big explosion, lots of purple bits visible. Miles is still at 96%. It is one of the benefits of being this large. This was one of the worst places to be hit with a missile, because a nuke because it actually damaged something important. All right, so this time it's the Norge. Our ability to turn around and face the Norge is, is poor. Our missiles on this side of Miles are likely not gonna get good engagement. There is damage here. I would assume it's because some of our missiles that bounced off the ground earlier got out here. Oh, she's scared of us. She's real scared of us. We're coming for you. Yes, excellent. Not the most successful impacts on those missiles, but... Well, they don't really have to be. I did include a seat. Uh, it's perilously close to this ammunition. Given that I can't really, <laughs> I can't really armor things on Miles. They're just, <laughs> they're just kind of there. Uh, it's not really the point, though. So, if cram mortars weren't disgustingly bad, the actual original idea for this vehicle was going to be a boat that had somewhat more armored pods. It'd basically be a bunch of very small, self-sufficient boats using cram mortars all stapled together. Probably could have redone that with cram cannons instead, <laughs> but decided to go for missiles and to make Miles fly because the terrain is absolutely terrifying in its potential interaction with Miles. Oh man, well... We are not taking impact damage, are we? Okay, so I see this thing that says 3 million impact damage. That's not- that's definitely not for our missiles. Our missile impact damage will get cleared, so that's self-inflicted impact damage. I do not know what's happening. I really don't. There's something not great potentially happening. We do not seem to be firing missiles anymore. That's because this enemy is despawning. Okay. Okay. And the impact damage is turned off. We definitely didn't do that much impact damage through missiles, or through, yeah, through missiles though, so maybe it's not due to ramming. We've, we've definitely exceeded a certain size that is breaking some sort of impact damage calculation. And I was paying too much attention to Miles while we killed the actual significant base that was here. Mm 
Maybe our missile somehow got sufficiently staggered that we never cleared the impact damage, but no, then we would have... I wasn't paying that much attention, but then we wouldn't have cleared the HE damage, and we didn't have that much HE damage. Well, flawless victory from Miles. Maybe in the future I'll try it with the battle size turned up a little bit more, but I'm still going to have to be really careful so that I don't accidentally try to spawn something in alongside Miles, so that the enemy gets to spawn in multiple things, but I don't. Anyway, I believe that's enough for this episode. I hope you all enjoyed watching, and I'll see you in the future.